cited reference searching is valuable because it shows how articles are interrelated and follows the progress of ideas through publications. Cited reference searching can find information that traditional searching may not. It allows researchers to look forward and backward in time. It identifies the more recent works that cite a particular paper. It indicates the author's influence. It can show the development of technologies, ideas over time. It identifies organisations and authors doing similar work or potential collaborators. And it identifies publications that cover similar topics. It can also be very powerful in identifying the seminal works in a field. So it can assist you to develop this idea of a potted research in your, potted view of your research in that area. So that tracking strands to current practice and identifying gaps in the literature is an important idea. And remembering that idea of uh, literature review is gives a potted view. What was the history? What is the current state of play? And what will be the future or filling the gap? So what I like to do is identify what a traditional search does. So often we find a great paper. It's very relevant to us. And we'll flip to the back, have a look at the reference list. And of course, so the reference list can only be older than that paper. But that's a very good method to use to actually find other papers that are relevant as well. With cited reference searching, you're going to find that other paper, those other papers. So you've got your original paper, you're going to find the other papers that are in the reference list, but you'll also find the more recent papers that have cited that particular work. And that's where the power lies with cited reference searching. So it shows how works are interrelated, as you can see on this diagram. It shows how an idea or innovation has been confirmed, applied, improved, extended, or corrected. Citation databases allow us to do three things from the parent record. So we're saying that the parent record is the 2001 record there. See the papers which have cited it, time cited or cited by, these ones here. See the papers which have cited the same records or references, which are these ones here. So they're the related rec records. There are a number of citation tools available. They index different journals, each producing different results. So some are better than others for certain disciplines. So we're going to look at three today. We're going to look at Scopus, Web of Science, and Google Scholar. Let's go across, because we've been in Web of Science previously, let's go back to Web of Science. And for those who have just joined us, I might just start all over again and go to the library. And we're going to Web of Science through View All Databases and W for Web of Science. Scrolling down to Web of Science. A collection of citation databases that provide citation count information for articles, books, and conferences. And note, there is this lovely feature where you, if this is one of your important databases, you can add it to your HiQ launch pad. I have an article that I'm interested in. So I found a good article, it's relevant to my area, it's relevant to my research, it's relevant to my thesis. I'm going to click on the down arrow next to topic and look for the title. 
So I'm looking for the title of the article. The article is Towards More Systematic Twitter. That should find it. Note that I'm doing a focus search on the field title. This should cut down any extra articles that have used that as keywords. And note that I've got two re results. I've got this one because it is the top one is because it's an erratum. So there's been a change to the original. But this is the one, number two is the one I'm looking for. Towards more systematic Twitter analysis metrics for tweeting activities. Note that it's been cited a hundred times. So a hundred papers have listed this in their reference list. We click on that. You'll see the list of papers that have cited the original paper. All right. You'll also note, looking at the reference list here or the records here, that the most recent ones have not been cited. That's a downside to this sort of searching. These have been published in January 2020, so only very recent and so not available for people to be finding them, reading them, using them, citing them just yet. But this one down here, Polarization and Acculturation, it actually was published in 2019, August, and it's already got 14 citations. You can see how valuable this type of searching is. Web of Science is updated weekly. It's a multidisciplinary database. It has 23 million records in it. And it includes conference proceedings, arts and humanities, social sciences, and science citation index as well. I'd like to do the same search now in Scopus. So we'll go back to databases. Along the tabs at the top, we've got databases W. We want to go to databases S for Scopus. Web of Science is a very old database versus Scopus, which is a relatively new, about 12 years old database. It's an index of peer-reviewed literature, including journals, books, and conference papers, covering a wide range of subject areas. It is primary, uh, primarily aimed at researchers and provides a number of tools to track, analyze, and visualize research. This is a really important database for many people. It's multidisciplinary again, and it has double the resources that Web of Science indexes. The cited reference searches start at 1996. It's, the database is updated daily. It has 33% of records from the health sciences, 30% from physical sciences, 22% from social sciences, and 15% from life sciences. The, it has some coverage of arts and humanities, and there's around 50 million core records with about 5.5 million conference papers and it has 100% coverage of Medline. And it covers, as I said, double the journals that Web of Science do. And you can create an account just now as you go into it, which I think is really nifty. And as you see, this is what we did in the previous um, module. Save your searches, set up email alerts, save documents to lists, review your author profile. Okay, so again, we're looking for a particular, looking for a specific article title. If I pop back over here, I should be able to copy that and pop it into my search in Scopus. and I'm looking in the field article title. 
and I've got the erratum up and then I've got my second option here which is the original article 139 so you can see that I've now got 139 sites to this article this is because as I said originally there's double the journals within Scopus and they cover different discipline areas as well if we were do, to do the same search in Google Scholar we'll see that we get different results once again Scholar type in that same search towards more systematic and here we have cited by 299 need to remember though that Google Scholar it's interdisciplinary and very popular but there is a poor quality control sometimes resulting in inflated citation counts so try this from a previous search if you found a really good paper go through the process that we've just gone through to identify how many sites and this is I find this is as a really good method for making sure that I've captured everything that I need to capture so I'm not missing out on any of the seminal works I'm not missing out on new information that's being published or in fact new authors that might be useful in my area as well just went back to that search in Scopus you could create alerts from here as well so have a look at how you would go about creating an alert if I go into here and you'll see set citation alert I could also do that for an author that I'm wanting to track because they're really important in my area so Google Scholar is fast it's free it's large and interdisciplinary Google Scholar citation counts may be exaggerated though as there are no duplicate there are duplicate entries for the same article and the time cited may also include duplicates so that's an important part to note Google Scholar provides very basic citation analysis whereas Scopus and Web of Science offer reports and further tools there's an activity for you to engage with if you haven't found a article that's of use or highly relevant from your previous searching try this one and go through the processes so the suggestion here is to use comprehensive searching it's also to keep up to date with table of contents and search alert statements and to use cited reference searching so this can be part of your methodology next time we meet it'll be AIRS 3 we're going to look at developing a systematic approach to organizing managing and recording information and notes apply data management strategies to organize and utilize data proficiently ethically and legally and identify a conference to attend and describe the networking benefits of attending that conference it's been a pleasure as usual and I'll see you next time Thank you.